There are a lot of switches out there, but so we don't bore you to death, we're going to go over two types of switches. I call them the breaking a circuit, so on off switches, this could be even like pressing a button, or the switching a circuit ones. This is like switching it from normally open to normally closed, or flip flicking it from an up position to a down position. We'll go first over the first method of just breaking a circuit. And then after that, we'll go into the switching circuits. I do have a secret. The switching circuits can also be on off circuits. If you just ignore one of these pins, it becomes an on off switch. The first thing we're going to configure is the two position toggle switch. This right here is an on on switch. It says right here on and on. It goes on and on and on. But if you flick the switch, it basically connects these two pins. And if you flick this switch here, it connects these two switch pins. You can treat an on on switch like an on off switch if you just ignore one of the pins. It's going to be helpful in this course to think of cir different circuits connecting. So this is a circuit connecting. And this is a circuit connecting with these two. These give you a little bit more flexibility than on off switches because an event can happen when it's in the down position and an event can happen when it's in the up position. This can be a little hard to wrap your mind around at first, but just treat it like an on off switch for now and ignore the third pin. We have these jumper wires right here. I peeled them away from their friends over here and you can kind of just plug them in here. You can even kind of bend the pins around like this. However, in your real simulator, I'd highly recommend getting some hookup wire. I'll put some links to this in the description below for your actual flight simulator, but these jumper wires work well for right now. I connected this top pin right here with a white cable, and this is going to be the active pin. And I always start with pin two. This is the first pin on the Arduino. You can find it right here. This black wire I'm going to put in the middle and it will be for ground. You can use any of the available ground pins. There are two right here. At the bottom, there's one over here next to the power and the five volts. And there's one sneaking over here next to 13. I'll just use these ones because I'm, I guess, used to them. We're not living an adventure today, I guess. This wiring right here should be correct as long as these two wires aren't touching because that would kind of defeat the point of a switch. The wiring of the switch is now complete and let's do a configuration. Why not? To start with the switch, let's go to inputs. And under this input right here, let's activate it. I always like to activate this first because if you have this unactivated, then it just won't work, which is kind of funny. Give it a good description. Maybe we don't need to be this descriptive though. Let's go click edit this little button right here with three dots and then go skip precondition. This is a little more funky. Skip config references. There's no configurations we're going to reference. And then let's go to input. This is the tab everything happens in. This is the magic tab. So let's select our Arduino, this module. And Thomas the Tank is what we named our Arduino. You will notice that we don't have any input devices. This was a complete oversight on my part. So we do actually want to add devices. So you can just click yes, we do want to add input devices and go over to MobiFlight modules. Let's go to add device and we're going to add a button. Even though this is a switch, it has a button function. However that happens. How about let's name this Bobby da battery. You can definitely go to town with your naming conventions and have like the Arduino number, your switch number, what it is, um, what its favorite color is, and just go from there. But I like to keep mine kind of lighthearted for the tutorials. We have our switch on pin two and let's click upload. Yes, we really do want to upload the configuration. It's going to upload, it's going to finish, hopefully, uh, and if it says upload finished with error, that's a common problem I sometimes get. For that, sometimes restarting MobiFlight really helps with that. If not, make sure your Arduino is connected correctly, and it's a correct 
Arduino uh, because other Arduinos aren't always supported. So we have our MobiFlight module pin right here. That's awesome. Click OK, go back here, and now we can select our device. Let's select Bobby the battery, and on press, we want something to happen. And on release, we want something else to happen. If we go over here, we will remember that this is a on-off switch. Basically, when the switch is on, we want the master battery to be on. But when the switch is off, we want the master battery to be off. So that's what press and release is. Let's go to action type. And my outline says that we're going to use an FSUIPC offset. I almost always use FSUIPC offsets. Though if you are using Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 events might be a good fit for you. Event IDs work with FSX, and I'm not sure about any others. We could look down this list for a master battery switch. Sometimes I like to test my luck and just see if they're in here really quick. It looks like it's not, and if it is, I'm not going to find it because that would be a lot of effort. Since we're going to use FSX for this specific switch, let's go over to our flight sim folder, FSX, and the FSUIPC for offset status PDF that we put in our shortcuts folder. Yada! So, this is, again, the fantastic list of offset number codes. Woohoo! It's a little intimidating at first because there are, like, infinity of them. Just like when you're doing busy work in school, control F is your friend. We can go over and search bat, and as long as we don't spell it wrong, we should be able to find it. So there are two results right here, battery, one for on, zero for off, and it can both read and write, which is quite awesome. We can also see the second result is to extend the battery life, which is completely irrelevant. So we're going to use offset 3102, the size in bytes is 1, and uh, we actually don't need any more information. So let's go over to our fancy input tab thing here and go offset, uh, I forgot what it was already, 3102. Size in bytes 1. It is going to be an integer. It'll be either 0 or 1. Those are both integers. And we don't need any fancy masking. After more than a year of COVID, no one wants that. And here is where all the magic happens. So this is the set value field. You can do really fancy stuff in this set value box. For now, we're going to set the value to 1 if it's on, if we press it. And then we're going to take all of these settings remake them so fsu ipc offset same offset size and bytes one interval no mask and then we'll set this value to zero so when we press it it'll set the value to one or on and when we release it we'll set the value to zero or off just as it says right here one on zero off let's save our file so we don't lose it because i know i lose a lot of things very easily and let's name this file Happy Moby Flighting. I like that. Moby Flighting is now a verb, I've decided. You can actually find this file in the description below. Like, if you make a mistake and spinach comes out of your switches, I don't know how you would mess up that badly. But if you really don't know how you can get anything to work, you could download this file, the link in the description, and then you can go from there and compare your files to the MobiFlight file and see what your problem is. We can go ahead and run FSX. Let's see, where is that little nincompoop? So we are in the simulator right here, but we can press run right here, this run button in MobiFlight, and that'll run the configuration. Now, if we go into the flight simulator, we can see that I'm not touching anything, but if we go over to the switch, and click it, we can see that this now controls the master battery switch. This is wonderful. The first fix with this is a wiring fix. You can go over to this wire and switch positions with the outer pin. So we brought it here 
and now and now if we go over here it matches up perfectly with the switch position there so that worked but what if we already soldered it and then encased it in resin and then put it inside of a bank vault and we don't want to switch our wire in that case you can do a software fix so we can go over to the on press and on release and you'll see that we have a value of one on press and a value of zero on release but we can just switch these so on press it'll have zero and on release it'll have one now it's just as we wanted that's so exciting now we have the same thing just on a rocker switch it doesn't have a third pin right here so we don't have to deal with any of that nonsense so what we could do is we could just say off and on and it works according to the simulator. You're going to do this with X-Plane. The XPU IPC offsets have a little bit of a different offset for master battery switch on or off right here. You can also use 261 Charlie with size and bytes of 4 and that'll give you the same result though it also does have uh, the offset I used right here. 3102 uh, for battery. It looks like FS2020 also has the offset 281 Charlie, size and bytes 4, so you can also use this if you'd like. And it looks like it actually has a little bit more information, so that's kind of friendly. But it also should work with offset 3102. We can use all three flight simulators with offset 3102. Mission complete. Put a little check mark over there and let's go over to the next one. This is awesome if you have an on off switch, but if you want to make use of an extra pin using an on on switch, then you can hook up another wire. This is another switch I have. I just added another wire to the other lead right here. The wiring diagram looks like this. Basically, the fundamental difference with this is that instead of having one configuration row with an on press and on release, you have two configuration rows with just an on press event. This is especially helpful for like micro switches and stuff where you want to know for sure what position it is in. So how do we make this on on switch? Well, it's pretty easy because there's a position one on event and a position two on event you just make two switches. I made these two switches under Moby Flight modules right here. They're button one and button two. For me, they're on pins five and six. And then under inputs, we can just make an up position and a down position. Activate them both. And for this, we're actually going to use SimConnect. Uh, so Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 events. Um, of course, put in our module and our device. Um, and then just use these Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 events. So this is an on press. You could think of it as whenever the um, top button is being pressed or whenever it's on the top button, you can have this happen. So we'll just do something simple. Let's say this is a lights handle, landing lights. So you could go under Microsoft generic lights and click an event landing lights on and off. So it'll be, when it's up, it'll be on. When it's down, it'll be off. A lot of times it's actually easier to duplicate rows than it is to make a new one completely. Uh, so I can delete my row here and start with a duplicated one, or I can just start fresh, which I think I'll do. Just click everything you need. And go to the same exact thing. Microsoft generic lights. And it's kind of helpful to type in Microsoft. Just select the drop down and click the M, and it'll. So. So again, this is the off or the down or the off position. Mm, landing lights off. So we have. I guess I'll rename it. I was going to do a gear handle, but it's done basically the same. So it's an on-on switch, but there's the on and the off position. So I'm loaded up into the flight simulator, and if I click run, it should be all good to go. 
Uh, when you use these Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 events and stuff, it all uses SimConnect, which doesn't require any external software. When you use FSUIPC offsets, uh, it does require FSUIPC. So this is all running. Let's see how it goes. So you can see the same thing happens with the on-off switch as it does with the on-on switch. You can see we can click it up. The landing light switch clicks up. Click it down. The landing light switch clicks down. And it works exactly the same, as long as everything's plugged in. But why would you use an on-on switch instead of an on-off switch? I really don't know the answer to that. Uh, it takes up one more pin per switch, doubling the amount of pins in the Arduino you'll need. So I don't really find a real concrete use for it, um, unless it's an added layer of kind of like protection. I really don't see any need for the on-on switch for MobiFlight because it's an Arduino. Uh, it can detect on and off, so there's really no need to use this on-on function. So this isn't really that practical in two-position toggle switches, but it is super important in three-position toggle switches. This toggle switch right here has a middle position that's off, and an upper position that's on, and a lower position that's on. So it's an on-off-on toggle switch. This will be super important in next week's video where we explain the three-position toggle switch. I really hope you found this video helpful. It's part of a huge crash course of MobiFlight knowledge bombs. So if you want to learn even more about MobiFlight, check out the link in the description below.